everyone and welcome back to Austin Talks where today we are covering probably my favorite thing in this world which is physics but not only physics I want to talk about philosophy today as well because philosophy and physics do really work hand in hand so I thought that'd be a really good thing to integrate as well but uh, ev um, the video is mainly uh, is the evolution of physics because many years ago Physics ha was uh, in like discovered and or invented, you, you could say, and still today it's still a very valued uh, topic. But it, like I want to know, uh, or like I want to share when it actually started because we've come a long way since then. So enough me rambling on. Let's just get right into it. Now, as I just said, uh, why now? Why am I doing this video now? As a person who loved, I don't know why it says loved because I still love physics. I wanted to find the uh, true historical depths of physics, and while I'm I am familiar with the uh, historical like components of physics, it's something that I think is really undermined in when you understand physics, and I think it's something that you really need to know and understand the actual like depth of some of the stuff. Now, I love uh, physics and wish to thoroughly, and I, I really do want to share my th opinions on, like, um, like why, why I came to be, uh, like, wh how it came to be physics. And if you have any, like, insights into physics, do absolutely let me know. I strongly encourage it. And there is no doubt that physics has played some sort of impact in our daily lives, whether we know it or not. But how is this the thing? How, how do we know that physics happens? I mean... Uh, take uh, the apple falling on Isaac Newton's head, like that was um, like everyday life uh, action, but that was to gra to do with gravity, which has uh, like to do with um, uh, physics. Uh, when you boil the kettle in the morning, when you're trying to have um, a cup of coffee, that's f thermal physics, and that's also electrical physics. I mean, you th there's a lot more like. There's a lot more depth into the stuff that you do day in daily life. I mean, what, how I record is a lot to do with physics, uh, f uh, computing physics to be exact. But like, there's so much, and it, you don't it, like people don't realize how much it impacts us. So that's what I'm here to do, uh, accomplish today. Now, first thing, first, like, <laughs> Um, the ancient Greeks was probably the first to establish uh, the idea of physics, but it mainly started when, uh, like, the, the, at the same time, the na name physics was, uh, like, thrown around quite a lot. But uh, this was, it, at the time, it was mainly known as philosophy because it was about people's different uh, ideas. But in the context of the time, if philosophy was a mathematical approach, was was considered... Um, with a mathematical approach which was considered physics later on of some sort which actually remains to be f uh, to be f like true to be fair it, physics is a mathematical tool that uh, define that like people have different philosophies in physics because uh, that's why I mean they work hand in hand uh, like a theory is a philosophy until it is proven if that d does kind of make sense like you believe that that's the case I mean you could say that gravity was the pro like um, gravity was a um, philosophy, but that's not a philosophy. That's a fact. Gravity is a thing. That's that's a di that's the difference. There's a philosophy like with electroweak theory. That's a theory. That's not exactly something that's proven. Unlike the standard model, when it was discovered, it was a theory, also known as a philosophy. But when it was proven, it changed to a mathematical tool, which is what it's still used today. Now, at the time, there was an, uh, there was more of an abstract approach to this uh, early sta state of physics, and um, constellation mathematics and more fur like further things were looked at. Um, it was also when the theory of Ed it was the ancient Greeks who really like um, built a whole foundation on every all types of knowledge, and they're um, they're off like f they started with the four elements such as fire, water, wind, and earth. Um, that that's actually just something that was created. That's more leaning towards chemistry than physics, but that was something that was implemented because it was something I read and I thought it was curious. It's just yeah, I don't know still how that how that acts upon physics or chemistry to be fair but leave it to them to find out but um after this we shift over to the ancient egyptians um so during this time it was roughly 1200 
uh, like BC. And during the ancient um, ancient Egyptians, they created the pyramid, which was when when observed is shown to have a lot of physical structure. It was only after they were uh, uh, like the um, like the pyramids were built that uh, there was a unobserved like at the time, uh, but like while they were building it, they didn't actually realize it. But uh, afterwards, there was a mathemat like they realized, oh wait, there's some uh, mathematical stuff here. It's like oh angles and stuff. So that's actually how um, that's like math was a big establishment during the ancient Egyptian times, and there was. Um, there was not much go- uh, to go off other than that, but at the time, mathematics was a, uh, the only big association in this context when we're discussing physics. Was the it was the only big thing that came out of it. But uh, but another thing that was like a constant fascination was stars. From the ancient Greeks to the uh, I mean, honestly, I think ancient Egyptians had a, b- a bigger um, like part to play in this which which was the like understanding of constellation they evaluated the re- like the understanding that the ancient greeks had but then made it like a so much bigger and so much uh like uh it's like right this is how this happens this is how that happens they really established like astronomy back then but now we take a really big time jump to the renaissance period um, now it was on. It was only many, many, many years later that the name physics started to take a big hit. Now this is on many, many years later, but um, this was the, physics was brought up quite a lot, and there was many re- uh, like religious debates around uh, physics, and this is when it got to more uh, serious, and like people, um, like people started to. Like, like Gal- Galileo was put in prison because of, because uh, at the time different, um, like, because they basically what basically what they believed in they di- others didn't, so they um so they didn't they didn't like that which, yeah and it was it was during this time however the fundamentals of physics was discovered with Nicholas Copernicus and Galileo Galilei, and almost a century later with Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah, I mean, the Renaissance period was a very, very big establishment for, um, like, uh, I mean, yeah, we had the, uh, re- like, the theories and philosophy from, um, uh, f- uh, from the ancient Greeks and the ancient uh, Egyptians, but this was, the, the, all of that was carried over many years later, but, like, it was in the, in between the 14th and 17th century where it got so... It, it, like the it, like it got so out of hand and the, the drawing on uh, on here is actually it's a it, people say that the mobile phone like it's a conspiracy it's basically a conspiracy theory and it was the only image that was found for the renaissance period so um yeah but that, uh, obviously this is just a conspiracy theory but yeah a lot of people's uh like the religious debates were a very big um like it, it like uh, thing which is why like a lot of physics research was um, put like um told to like not be said out loud um which yeah I guess, I guess I guess that's true I mean if because people don't know how to exp- honestly I don't know how to explain it so um but uh, yeah that's that happened but then with the best part we had oh wait never mind wrong wrong one wrong one but Rene Descartes, um, Rene Descartes' discovery, I can't say that name, it, uh, he, Rene Descartes made his um, discovery in 1644 and, with, uh, and this fully changed philosophy and made it fully into physics. This was the point where it fully had diverted. I mean, we, we met somewhere in the middle of the beginning of the Re- uh, Renaissance period. It's now fully sw- switched. Now, before Isaac Newton's big distru- discovery, he was researching the philosophy of movement and the force, and this was where René Descartes, and a, a renowned philosopher at the time, came in and made strides in the field along with Isaac Newton. He worked with Isaac Newton, like, informally, that like, he used his research with Isaac Newton. Um, now, René Descartes formulated each of the laws of nature of motion, that's a lot of ofs, um, and leading to the discovery of planetary motion, which was actually built on by Nicola Copan- Nicholas Copernicus's work in astronomy and Galileo's. And Ga- uh, Galileo depended uh, on natural uh, independent theories, but then like many of those ideas shifted uh, to a new field called physics, which is derived from the word physica. Yeah, um, that's actually just a, uh, that's a Greek word, so fun facts for you there. Yeah, it's derived from the word physica, which is, um, 
which is what it, mainly what it was called at the time, but like it was called physics uh, physics at this point. And um, yeah, and I actually think like Rene Descartes is a good like um, like what's the word I'm looking for? I like icon saying if yeah you can still be a philosopher. I mean philosophy as I just as I said like philosophy and physics do play hand in hand. And like if you in university if you want to be like a really like you would really want to do physics i'd actually encourage taking philosophy as well because then you see the sides of both worlds which i mean if you want to i don't know like it's um like uh, oppenheimer with political uh uh like uh, where he went from uh, a scientist to a politician because then you can have both uh, sides which i think is actually really good yeah but now Isaac Newton's discovery, 22 years later, 22 years later, yeah, that's right, I was wondering, questioning my grammar, but in 1966, on a warm summer uh, day, Isaac Newton made the most, uh, the most, like, breakthrough in physics, first off, he was actually the man who created calculus, which is no picnic when talking mathematics, uh, but um, he it did he did start in philosophy, but and his discovery um, was the uh, thing that uh, that really shifted philosophy. I mean, as I said, I mean Rene Descartes was the one that really foot like like he we he we went from fifty percent to ninety percent. Isaac Newton got that last ten percent. He discovered um, gravity when an apple fell on his head. Just a little anecdote, and there are now uh, there are no backed up anecdotes on how uh, the apple actually fell on his head. Uh, like, um, but like that got me him thinking, uh, and this is how we actually got the Newton's law of gravitation, also known as his third law, which is presented to the physics world as a fundamental tool. Uh, law uh, gravitation, obviously, <laughs> there's no way to sugarcoat it, but like um. Gravitation is like a very big field. Uh, like, um, yeah, there's the, we got gravitational field strength, and this obviously di obviously led to bigger um, differences in uh, uh, what was it? Oh my god! In uh, yeah, like astronomy, because then they could measure different uh, gra like gravitational strengths of other planets, such as Earth and the Moon. Now. Many years later, or like maybe a century later, um, in, in electromagnetism was uh like I said uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for, was introduced, and in the nineteenth century this was considered all the rage, and many physicists pi uh, f physics. Physicists, uh, physics pioneers, that took me like five minutes to say, uh, many physics pioneers worked on it. And this one of the, uh, one, just one of those people was James Clerk Maxwell. Now also, um, this uh, electromagnetism ma magnetism had many, many people. And here are just uh, other names, Michael Faraday, Alexandra Volta, and James Watt. Like the Watts and then Volt and, and then Faraday's Law, so if those are familiar to anyone but james clerk maxwell is responsible for building on the foundation of electromagnetism which was discovered in 1820 while he, others did the original work he created on um, of his uh, like a uh, combined uh, he basically combined every um thing that was created so he, like took like the laws the measurements and everything and formed maxwell's equations and uh, there's a really good debate in whether while that is impressive is it really his work to me yes there is no problem with building on other people's work but it depends on how you like say if you say oh i'm built i built on this guy's law but then i've made these equations and the, the, all the credit goes to me that is wrong i think you should still add in like yeah i used the, the idea of this law to create this yeah that's different but um, but the, so Maxwell's equations f uh, are four different equations that each explain certain aspect um, of electromagnetism with different variables or um, like electrical uh, variables that is. And electromagnetism was literally all the rage at the time. Everyone was like, "Wow, electricity um, is the thing." And we also we had other like people that were influenced by this, like Nikola Tesla and many other people, and uh, like. Uh, I actually think James Clerk Maxwell, as much as he used the research, of, like obviously he, he, he was able to use the research of other people, he created his own mathematical tool, which is like one of the e like easiest routes uh, mathematically in electro when understanding quantum electromagnetism. So I would say as much as yeah he used other people's work, it's just mathematically 
I'd be better than anyone's. But, um, hey. Yeah. Now, oh yes, the atomic structure. Well, this touches kind of on chemistry, but like, yeah. But now, the uh, t atomic structure was a foundation for many of the accomplishments in physics, which is also derived from chemistry, as I've literally just said. Um, the atomic structure was built by many f uh, physics pioneers, uh, like J.J. Thompson and Marie Curie. Marie Curie was uh, the person who discovered um, uh, radium, if anyone knows that. And these people revolutionized the periodic table. Well, like with their added elements, that is. That's not like, oh, yes, we created the um, uh, a periodic table. I remember someone told me who created the periodic table. I am now blanking on it. I've now forgotten. I'm very angry about that. But yeah, as I say, Marie Curie discovered radium, showing how the different atomic structure compared to each other. So every atom has a different atomic structure. Um, and specific atomic chemicals, or like uh, some of them uh, are like acids and chemicals, if you learn in chemistry, and some of them end up k killing you, like radium. Um, and uh, this research was actually later developed uh, for years, and the f this was actually the foundation work for the Manhattan Project. If you've watched the Oppenheimer uh, movie, that the atomic structure is how that movie happened. Uh, so yeah, and um, like uh, the f um, the thing is the things that like structure the Manhattan Project was the discovery of nuclear fission and, and nuclear fusion and a lot lot more um like and I also like how the hydrogen like the hydrogen bomb was another thing but like all of this depends on the atomic structure of each of the um like uh, atoms and that's why I think hydro a hydrogen bomb was actually a very very dangerous one to use and so was the atomic one i mean that was used plutonium so i guess that was yeah but like as i say atomic structures have di uh, have different um like protons neutrons and if you can see by the diagram they move in different actions cr di having different atomic masses and this all plays a very big part in chemistry not physics uh, <gasps> my favorite part now welcome to the quantum world i love quantum i love quantum physics and uh, now at the very at the very start of uh, tw the 20th century quantum mechanics was the fa was a fast track to discovery and this was all due to the work of max planck um he discovered quantum theory and his work in the field introduced the, uh, on not only the physical world to uh, quantum mechanics but the whole universe and this really impacted the developments in physics since they and like to be fair it still is impacting with like Planck's constant is like a constant uh, use in uh, quantum mechanics uh, mind my pun but it gave um but it gave us the world the grand unified theory uh just i'm not going obviously there's no like big slide on the grand unified theory but a grand unified theory is essentially a theory that unites all the fundamental forces electromag uh, so electromagnetic uh, force, electro, no, no, electro weak. Let's try that again. Electromagnetic uh, force, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, and gravitational force. Now the issue why the grand unified theory cannot be solved is the same uh, function as um, string theory is because gravitational is not easily um, like compatible with quant uh, with the other fundamental forces. So that's that for you and uh that was a weird voice crack but um as you can see like the quantum world is also uh, can be referred to as the uh, subatomic world and uh, people think quantum mechanics is a like um topic or just based off um particle physics now particle physics is actually my favorite type of physics i kind of i i want to say i disagree but it, I mean, it is basically a part of it because quantum mechanics is a, about particles in different functions, and quantum mechanics is quantified particles at like many minuscule, which is basically particle physics. Depend, I would say quantum mechanics is a big subsection of uh, particle physics. That is for sure. Now, here are the most influential minds of physics. So first off, we have Aristotle in the very far left. Below him, we have Richard Feynman, my favorite. Uh, so uh, if I, my top three is in here. So my Richard Feynman, my favorite. Then we've got to his right, Isaac Newton. To, above Isaac Newton, we have Albert Einstein, an icon. To his right, nearly forgot my left and right there, we have Stephen Hawking. 
and then uh, another great um, physicist, amazing mind. And then to his right, we have Max Planck, as I said, uh, with the uh, quantum uh, quantum world. And then, as I said earlier, Rene Descartes. Now, many people have played a role in uh, the development of physics, and there are still uh, people carrying their legacy today. There are many physicists that are using their research, and their research has been proven to just be absolutely um, like incredible, and is still used today because it is just that incredible. And some of them started, uh, like some of them started with philosophy, which then shifted over to physics. And this, these incredible minds include all of the people I have just mentioned they like all i to me these are the best minds but like there are so many others that i can uh, i'd be here for like ages listing all the good ones but everyone has a contribution to physics uh this just happened these people just had happened to have a, a bigger impact um and i think other people could agree as well now, yeah, this is the last thing I wanted to talk about, which was the discovery of the Higgs boson, because not a lot of people know about this. In 2012, an experiment was conducted to prove the validity of the standard model, which is a uh, very like key component in understanding particle physics and in the f uh, f a fundamental in part should have read beforehand a fundamental in particle physics from the and from this a new addition to the standard model was made because uh, it's just a, like a collection of particles and we had a different um a one called the higgs uh, boson now the higgs boson is a particle that can share mass with other elementary particles such as fermions and bosons when it collides with them at, um, at high energy so if you can see in the diagram in the very middle that is the higgs boson and the higgs field that is emitting from it is sharing with other different particles and all that mass um, is what's shooting out and sharing it with other particles and that's when it collides at high energies and now um this was named after the theoretical physics named peter higgs still uh, still here today and he uh won a nobel prize for this discovery and i'm not surprised um, this the Higgs boson was a really big discovery because not only is it wasn't a new particle, it was a very distinctive particle as it can share mass, which is incredible. It's it's definitely um it's something new, which is that's definitely for sure. And that is it. Or as of now, that is all that we have. Oh, I love physics. I love physics so much. Okay. Right, everyone, I hope um, you enjoyed the video um, as much as I did. And um, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe and comment what else you would like to see on the channel. And without further ado, I do hope you all have a great day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.